Mazda CX-8 land yacht going for gold and, let's be frank, looking pretty strong for the in-pants poopy hexathlon at the Queensland Consumer Tribunal Olympics. There's some important implications in this one, dude, for you. If your reasonably new car just happens to be one of those recidivist in-pants poopers. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Australia only. Even Mazda's, dude. Website. Card. Now, this report, I have to say, is the anatomy of a complete lemon. And of all the fears that one must harbour when one drops the big bucks on a new vehicle, this would be a big one, would it not? Just spending weeks endlessly traipsing to and fro, yo dealer, just to get this niggling little complaint and that one fixed. And every time you drop the R-bomb and you say refund, they go, oh, that's only for major defects, dude. So I want to get into how a string of minor defects can amount to a major defect, which is a trigger for a full refund or replacement under consumer law. The court has just found in a case like this, and I think it's really worthwhile if you, as the car owner of a Ted Set Lemon, is at least aware of this. So we'll get into the details next. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Now, I'm not a hardcore IT guy, but I've heard enough, especially recently, about data breaches, scams and hacks to know that being online can be inherently risky and costly. You don't have to be tech savvy to use NordVPN. It's a simple one-stop cybersecurity solution. One click and you are protected from hackers, malware and pop-ups across as many as six devices. NordVPN is the world's fastest VPN. I don't even notice it running in the background, frankly, and it only costs about as much as a cup of coffee to keep your data, your identity, and your devices secure every month. NordVPN can also save you money because you can assign your virtual location to another country where, for example, flights and accommodation might be cheaper than they are back at home. The same goes for streaming services, and you can access live sporting events and other content that may not be available where you actually live. It's a pretty small price to pay for cyber security, not to mention the potential savings also on the table. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC to get a huge discount off your plan plus four months free. Totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so I've got a ruling here from the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, which is consumer court, basically, up there in Queensland. And it concerns Michael Watkins versus Newstead Mazda. And this judgment was handed down on the 26th of October, just gone. And the application was made on the 2nd of June, 2021. So... Nobody ever said, the wheels of justice turn rapidly, did they? And the presiding judge, they don't call them judges, of course, in consumer court. They call them members. It's Member Cranwell who delivered this judgment. So we've got Michael Watkins. His rap name can be M-Dub. And what do we call a judge whose first name is Member and second name is Cranwell? I think we could call him MC Hammer. That fits. So we've got M-Dub, MC Hammer, and the dealer, Newstead Mazda. M-Dub has been ordered to return the 2019 Mazda CX-8, the lemon-scented article of uh, discussion here, and the dealer is to pay him a full refund of $60,000 plus 272 bucks in change kind of thing. Now, this report is all about a thing in consumer law, how... A series of minor defects can turn into a major defect if the court finds your way with this. And this is important because minor defects have to be remedied 
okay? But they're not a trigger for refund or replacement. So if you've got this dead set lemon and you go back for this niggling thing and that niggling thing and the other niggling thing, and before you know it, you're 18 months down the track, you've been back for six different problems and you might have been back to the dealer a dozen different times or something, your car's been off the road for a couple of weeks, whatever. That could amount to a major defect under consumer law, which is the trigger for a refund, which I would want if I just dropped 60,000 bucks on a car that, frankly, is a bit of a shitbox, right? So let's get into that. So MDUB actually alleged that there were 13 of these defects with this particular vehicle, and let's face it, it's only like three years old, but MC Hammer found only six to be present at the time of supply, which is kind of important because under consumer law, Anything you buy has to be free of defects and reasonably durable. That's a cornerstone of consumer law. Free from defects, reasonably durable. So of the 13 defects that MDUB alleged with the vehicle, MC Hammer found that only six of them were present at the time of supply. And they would be, in order, dodgy wheel balance. So the first defect that, you know, MDUB, found was that he's driving up the road and he gets on the highway and the thing is like Elvis shaking all over, okay? And that was traced back to a dodgy wheel balance that was not done properly at the time of supply. So that's thing number one. Minor defect, most probably. But then the rear disc brakes started to wear out prematurely and unevenly. They kind of had to fix them and the car was off the road for a bit. And then he's driving along and the dashboard starts to squeal like a pig, boy, right? And this is down to a dodgy fan in the HVAC system. Not reasonably durable, okay? So that's defect number three. And then he's driving along and M-Dub is uh, an Uber driver, a rideshare driver, okay? So the driver's seat frame collapses, which is not meant to happen. And uh, then when they fix that, okay, the memory system in the seat thing stops working, okay, so that's because they didn't reinstall the seat properly at the dealership, so that's kind of a supplementary problem, but the collapse of the seat base was a defect that MC Hammer found to have been existent at the time of supply. And then uh, what are we up to? Number five now, okay? Problem number five. And this is only like a three-year-old car and not a cheap one. The rear suspension was found to be too soft. And this was independently determined by Pedders and Fulcrum. There are separate reports that uh, M-Dub commissioned on all of this, okay? And it's in the context of just riding around generally, but also towing. And there's a problem with towing because... Apparently, at the point of sale, M-Dub is asking the dealership, right, about towing his trailer, which is a boat on a trailer with no brakes totaling 850 kilos. And the conversation at the dealership is reported to have gone, uh-huh, 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 that'll be fine. When, in fact, the vehicle can only tow 750 kilos with a trailer with no brakes. And P.S., the download limit on the tow bar is 80 kilos. And this was not disclosed. So there's also this issue of the stated purpose of the vehicle was in part to tow this heavy trailer with no brakes. And the vehicle cannot do that, but there were some imputations made to the effect that she'll be right, mate, you know? And then, of course, just for completeness, the front brakes went in pants poopy totaling defect number six and the gold medal in the in pants poopy hexathlon which is probably not a real event in the olympics but uh oh, look. i don't know if you can hear that but the battle of britain is going on upstairs that's lovely um so i went and had a look at what mazda has to say about the way it designs its cars and what one should expect and I do find this hilarious. We'll get to the judgment in just a second, but this is hilarious. The, the shit that car companies say about their product is just... <coughs> I don't know if to laugh or... I don't know whether to laugh or vomit, frankly. Anyway, Mazda goes, quote, When you follow your imagination, you create your own rules. You're free to nurture a strong focus on human-centric design. And I'm just seeing all of these polar bears and wildebeest, 
you know, sundry other animals who are just gutted that the Mazda of their dreams is designed for human beings and not their herd, whatever. To develop a firm grounding in the handcrafted form of Mazda's Kodo Soul of Motion design language. P.S. Design's not a language, you twats. It's just styling. Anywho, to make a commitment to a future of cleaner, more sustainable Earth for future generations. The Earth is just fine in terms of sustainability. It's going to be here for ages. The question is sustainability for humans, dudes. To create without boundaries, that's how imagination drives us. Well, that's fantastic. But what a pity this whole philosophy didn't extend to, you know, balancing the friggin' wheels or getting the brakes right in M-Dub's case, I'd suggest. So, there's that. They go on when perhaps they should not, and they say that our Kodo design philosophy compels us to create cars that embody the dynamic beauty of life except when the HVAC fan is squealing like a pig boy in the background. Cars that transcend the limitations of a simple A to B vehicle and become a partner you can rely on, although not in terms of the brakes or the suspension in this case. That inspires you, inspires you to go back to the dealership regularly with a certain vengeful gleam in your eye, I'd suggest. The design of every Mazda expresses the beauty of motion seen in all living creatures, giving each vehicle a soul of its own. Dude, I don't think this particular transcendent soul of motion mobile even managed to get to first base on the a to B readiness front, like there's usually a gulf between what they say and what you get, but this really is making the Grand Canyon look a bit trivial, isn't it? Plus, uh, giving a vehicle a soul of its own, I it really is terrible to see a full blown case of MMD marketing masturbation disorder. The sense of oneness, they say, between a rider and his beloved horse is the ultimate bond. Yeah, I think I saw that movie once. It did seem to be quite a substantial bond. We call this Jinba Ittai, a bond that Mazda has worked tirelessly to recreate between a car and driver. A feeling that can only be engineered through the passion and expertise that has passed down through generations of Mazda engineers and experienced by drivers world over, world over. It is lovely, I think, when a man and his horse are as one. Well, I'm pretty sure, although I've never really felt that with any of my horses because we tend to keep it, you know, just a bit professional. Pretty safe to assume that M-Dub and his horse, well, he's trying hard not to show it, but baby, baby, you know it. Now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa, 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 there is some good meat in there from time to time. Par 72, this is MC Hammer now. I find the series of defects set out above taken as a whole are such that a reasonable consumer fully acquainted with the nature and extent of the failures would not have acquired the motor vehicle. No shit, Sherlock. Look, I just want to let you know that over the first... 18 months to two years that you own this car, the following six failures are going to happen. Do you still want to go ahead? Yes slash no. MC Hammer again. A reasonable consumer would not expect to have to return a new vehicle multiple times over a one-year period in order for the six defects which I have accepted to be remedied. I emphasise that my finding is based on the series of defects taken together. It may well be the case that none of the defects individually would in itself have amounted to a major failure. 
So there's that. That's kind of important to know, right? So if I was you and I was lumbered with some shitbox lemon from hell, what I would do is take extensive notes. I would make a Google Doc or something of that nature and I would turn it into a diary of uh, contemporaneous notes about the problems that I experienced and what I did and who I approached and when that happened and what they said because it really is apparent when you read this judgment that you've got to prove it you've got to have records and you've also got to have independent uh, expert assessment apart from anything else but you're going to have to start with records about what went wrong and when and how big a deal it actually was to fix and whether the dealership accepted that or not and how long it took them to fix and all of that shit because you're going to have to basically say that these things add up to a major failure even though each one individually might be minor. Another interesting uh, finding by MC Hammer here is in paragraph 74 of the judgment, which I'll link to in the description, okay, if you want to read the full thing. He goes further, the respondent, which is the dealer, okay, provided no evidence as to what modifications would be necessary in order for the motor vehicle to be able to tow the applicant's 850 kilo boat on a trailer without brakes. In these circumstances, I'm not satisfied that the motor vehicle could easily and within a reasonable time be remedied to make it fit for the disclosed purpose, which is kind of important as well. So if you ask the dealer a straight question about, I'm gonna do this with the vehicle that I buy, can that car do that? If they say, yeah, it can, then you'd really want to make notes of that kind of thing as well. Because if it transpires that ultimately the vehicle cannot do that and you're left, as Gunnery Sergeant Hartman would say, in a world of shit, then that is also, that disclosed purpose thing is really important under consumer law. I guess the only problem here is how do you prove it, right? If they say, no, we didn't say that, and you say, yeah, we did, then how do you prove it? And the only way I can think of to prove it is if it's in writing. So you'd want to have those special kinds of conditions in the contract if they really are important to you. Now, just before I let you go, there's a couple of other things about this judgment that I found kind of interesting that might impact you if you find yourself in the same position. Now, apparently M-Dub, the owner of this CX-8, also tried it on in court for damages in the amount of $13,700 for income that he lost as a rideshare driver presumably driving for Uber or something, and the court knocked that back on the basis of it being what's called an expectational loss, which you can't apparently claim for. Expectation being a bit like, well, if the dog hadn't stopped for a piss, it would have caught the rabbit, as opposed to, well, here's the bill that I had to pay as a consequence of blah, like different to being directly out of pocket for something. So that was kind of interesting. And there was a whole, one of the alleged defects that the court did not find in favour of was a time when M-Dub was barrelling into a roundabout, apparently, and he went snout first into a wallaby or wallabies, and that caused the pedestrian protecting bonnet airbag system to fire off, and that caused some consequential damage to the car. Anyway... Damages there in the form of insurance, uh, presumably the excess payment of 800 bucks there, which was also not approved. And the court did not also allow MDUB to claim the cost of filing the action, which was like 325 bucks or something. But I'm sure you'd agree that generally he's in front because I can see a whole bunch of conversations between dealers and manufacturers and customers all going, no, 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 that's just a minor defect, dude, even if you've had six of them. And the important thing to realise here is that six defects, even though they each might be minor in nature, collectively, they add up to a situation where you would not have procured the vehicle had you known, and therefore you might be a candidate for a full refund. Now, I would suggest also that I'm just reiterating one judgment and I'm not a lawyer and if you find yourself in this situation, the details really do matter and you should plonk yourself down in front of a lawyer forthwith with all the details and get some expert advice about exactly what you might expect if you go to court, like balance of probabilities, 
will I win? How much is it going to cost me to get there? And all other salient features like that that you and I don't know about because we're not lawyers, get that information and then take your lawyer's advice and do that because you might be in line for a full refund, which means sayonara lemon. And I think we all really would want that in a situation like M-dubs. <laughs>